Hello everyone. This is Suzette, also known as Primitive Stitcher. Thank you for joining me. I have missed you all. Um, I have tried to make a video a couple of different times. Made the video. It looked great on my iPad. It's a brand new iPad. Uploaded it to YouTube. Rewatched it. And it was corrupted. So, tossed that one. About a week later, made another one. Same things happening. I don't know what's going on. So, hopefully today, this one will work. If it is corrupted in certain spots, I will put a warning. I'm just going to go ahead and upload it. And it is what it is. Anyway, thank you again for joining me. Uh, I've had a lot of new subscribers lately, so I hope you enjoy your time spent with me. And thank you for all of those who are returning. I've missed you all. Before we get into stitching, I do want to answer a few questions that I've had. And I want to also apologize. I've been very negligent in responding to the questions on my videos. Um, so I'm going to do those here and I hope that I've caught them all. If I haven't, please ask the question again and I will try to be better at replying to those. So one of my questions was regarding my project by Rosewood Manor called Antique Tentiles. And some of you may recall that I had over dyed some floss for that project. And the question was, what was my base color prior to over dyeing? And that was just a DMC 926. Another question that I had was, do I, do I always use a hoop on small projects or do I use it on large projects as well? This is a tough question because when it comes to how I stitch, I am all over the place. Sometimes I stitch in hand, sometimes I use a hoop, sometimes I use a frame, sometimes I use Q-snaps. If it's, if I don't have an available frame and it's a large project, I will use a hoop. Small projects, it, de it really depends on the fabric. Some fabrics lend themselves more to stitching in hand and others need a hoop. I'm sorry if that's confusing, but I don't have a set standard, so to speak. Third question, what frames do I use? I use frames by Artisan Designs. He can be found on um, the internet under Artisan Designs. He's a one-man show. They are all handmade. I've had my Elon lap stand since the late 90s and it's more beautiful today than it was then. When I purchased that back in the late 90s, I couldn't afford the frames. I, I was using uh, Q-snaps at the time. It, hold for a moment. Thane, come out of there. Come on out of there. Hey, buddy. Come on. Um, sorry, Thane is with me. Um, his dad's at work. Hold, please. Thane. Okay, so sorry. I'll try to cut that out, but I'm really trying to not do any editing today. I did, um, let's see, I purchased the, the lap stand. I was using Q-snaps at the time. It works great for those. Many years later, I bought the frames. I love them. I have a variety of frames, not just the artisan. Um, what's the other one? 
the little spiky things. I have a couple of those. I have some of the very inexpensive ones that you can buy at like Joann's and Michael's and Hobby Lobby. Those are my least favorite. I can't get a good tension on those. But with the Artisan, I get great tension. And I can't say enough. They are very well made. Project bags. I had a question about project bags. And let me see if I can easily. Okay, let's do this one. It's been a couple of years since I've made this style of project bag that I have my tutorial on. But the question was, is the seam of the lining stitched in with the seam of the bag? And the answer is yes. If you're having, like, I think you were having problems with the, the lining being loose. I don't really understand how you might have done that because my lining is precisely matching up with my bag. So maybe just go back and watch that section of the video again. I will try to go back and find that section and watch it myself and if I can give you any more pointers on that I will I'm sorry I didn't have time to go back and watch that yet but your your lining should not be super loose it's it's secured on all parts of the outer bag I had a question about in my last couple of videos I was sitting in front of a cabinet in my dining room and I call it a shrunk that cabinet um, houses a lot of my cross stitch supplies the drawers hold my various flosses and on the inside there there's a couple of shelves and some more drawers and it holds my excess DMC floss, my finished projects that haven't been fully finished, my fabric, some of my fabric, etc. Anyway, that piece of furniture was acquired in Germany. I don't believe it's German made. How I came to have it is the officers' spouses' clubs on the, on the bases would hold an antique and craft fair every year. And we often had vendors who would donate items to the officers' wives, kind of in a raffly kind of, kind of way. And one of the spouses won that piece of furniture and really it wasn't her style. Um, she had no place for it and therefore it came to live with me. And it's huge, it's heavy, it's well made. To me it has an Asian influence to it, but I have no... Um, further information on it. I, it is one of maybe four pieces of furniture that I will never ever part with. And the last question that I could remember was how does Thane and Morris get along? How do they get along? Um, <laughs> not fabulously. Morris, you have to understand, is an old man, and Thane is a puppy, and Thane wants to play with Morris, but Morris really isn't interested in playing. Um, as time goes on, they are kind of getting more and more used to each other, 
but Morris prefers to be by himself. I wish that they would cuddle up and be good buddies, but it just hasn't happened yet. And I don't know if it will happen because my daughter um, has returned and hopefully will be taking Morris to a new home with her uh, in the near future, but more about that later. Okay, so I think that that wraps up all the questions. So let's get on to mania. And again, I apologize for this being a late mania update, but for me, mania lives on. And uh, like I said, I tried to make videos along the way and it was frustrating that it wasn't working out. So, uh, a recap on how I participated in Mania this year is I took previous year's Mania projects and put them um, into my plans. So everything that you are going to see today is from a previous year, dating back to 2017 to 2019. I will try to remember to tell you what the fabrics are this time and I won't be able to tell you where I was necessarily previously on all of these, but I did make some good progress on many of them. The first one is Boxwood Manor by Stacey Nash and this one is stitched on 35 count Weeks Dye Works parchment with the call for threads and this is my progress. And this, actually, I will try to... So I made some good progress on the building, I feel like. I think maybe I did the basket. On day two, I worked on Pepper Cricket Farm which is the Dimensions by Charles Waisaki. Will look like this, only I am not going to be putting the border on. And this is stitched on, I believe it's something like a, twenty or 22 count even weave of some sort. And this is my progress. I know that I worked down in these areas to try to fill in that. On day three, I worked on Stacy Nash, Mary Bovey. And this one is being stitched on Thirty Two Count Murky by Picture This Plus, which is the call for. I'm not really sure what part I worked on here, but it's kind of hard to see. I have the borders going up. You can see it better in person, what I've done. And I'm using the call for threads on that. Next up is a Brenda Gervais piece called Needle and Thread. And this one is being stitched on a 36 count 
I'm not really sure. It's I know it's 36 count, but I it might be whatever was called for. Number Oh, uh, so Mary Bovey, I did work on for three days, so I'm calling the needle and thread number six. Number seven, shall I compare the by Blackbird Designs? Like this. And this is being stitched on 32 count Winter's Brew by R&R. &R. And that is where I am. Number eight is a Stacy Nash Animal Crackers Ginny. And this one is being stitched on 36 count vintage homespun by R and R. And I believe I had some of the outline done and this. So I came on down and put in her dress outline. She's gonna be so cute. Next up is another Stacy Nash, which was from last year's Mania, called Mary Burtis. And I don't know if you recall, but I had decided that I was going to restart it because I had miscut my fabric and I just didn't want to live with those tiny little borders. So this is being stitched on 28 count raw natural linen. And I got quite a bit done on this. This was a, a quick one to stitch up. And 99.9% .9 of these, I'm using whatever the call for uh, fibers are. I rarely substitute anything. I'm too chicken. Next up is Pattern Pretties. Sticky note over there by Jeanette Douglas. Very beautiful. And I didn't make a huge amount of progress on this. Oops. Let me see if I can. I just put in. Um, what I would call the borders of each. Still a ways to go. This one is in my stitch 10 and 20 challenge, so that will be seeing lots of love soon. Number 11. I have to say, I have never given up on pieces before. This may be a first. I don't know. It's just not really speaking to me anymore. And why can't I find it? It is from the 2016 Just Cross Stitch 
Halloween. And it's called Potion, Brews, and Spells. If I can... I don't know. It's, it's just not really... I may... I may do a portion of it. I don't think I'm going to do the entire thing. We will see. To be determined. And this one I am stitching on a hand dyed fiber that I over dyed. And I finished this little piece up. So you can see, like, there's a lot to it. I don't know. We'll see. And that is a 36 count fabric as well. Sampler Stocking by Carriage House Samplings. This one is being stitched on a 40 count vintage metal room. I will say I didn't have a lot of time to stitch this day for whatever reason, and I did not want to stop. I, I think I finished up this little berries up here. I'm not sure I had the top part on those. And then I started down on the letters. Such a beautiful design. Okay. My day 13 is called Abigail Colby's Extract Sampler, a, Chil a Cheerful Mind. And I am doing this piece, which is all over one using um, Belle Soise Silk. On, the called for is 36 count sand by Picture This Plus. No, I'm sorry. The call for is 40 count Luna from Lakeside Linens. I'm using 36 count sand. I did a little bit, but I struggled with this. I just felt like the um, Belle Soie was too thick for this fabric. So I have some Tudor silk on order and I'm going to try that and see how that works going over one and we'll probably restart this. Okay, oh my goodness, we're already at 23 minutes and we're barely halfway. 12 Days of Christmas Sewing Roll by Stacy Nash. And this one is stitched on 30 count putty by Weeks Dye Works. And I just continued on with the boxes and the borders. Oh, uh, here's one that I had a hard time putting down too. Sarah Cricks, Crickets by Stacy Nash. Will look like this when finished. And this is being stitched on 32 count dirty linen.
Ah, another Stacy Nash called Love Pin Keep and Heart. I am just doing the pin keep for now. And I have a finish. That was stitched on also 32 count dirty linen. Grace Bridges was next in line, and that is also Stacy Nash. Not the best photo, but there you are. I can't wait to get to that big red bird. This is being stitched on 35 count parchment. And I made it all the way across. I didn't have a huge amount of time to stitch on this one called Patriotic Pomp. It's by J.A. Stevens, stitched on 32 count white. It didn't really give a call for it other than just a 32 count linen. Stitching parts of it over one. I was up in this section. And even though it doesn't look like a lot, <laughs> I got the word July in and I came down and finished that and started the fill in there. Oh, I don't have any of the stars in yet. This section is over one. I need to start that work on that early in the day with fresh eyes and good light. Sorry, my bags are falling over. God Save the Queen by Shakespeare's Peddler. Looks something like that when finished. And I stitched God Save. This is being stitched on 40 Count Mallow with all the call for. Next up is called 1801, what do you call it? 1801 House. Came in kit form, Chessie and me. Stitched on the fabric that was in the kit. I will do this as well, but I have this section finished. had um, some specialty stitches. I chose to do the strawberries just in cross stitch. They were supposed to be Smyrna crosses, I believe. Yes. So cute. But I'm calling that a finish. Just in case I decide not to do the other part. Christmas at Hollyberry Farm, Stacy Nash. This is being stitched on 35 Count Mink by R and R. And I just worked a little bit more on the upper border. Still have a long way to go on that. Honeyberry 
by Erica Michaels. Stitched on 40 count gauze silk. And I did make a fair amount of progress on this one. Let me see if I can. Maybe I can fold this in so that you can actually see. Because I forgot to bring anything to. So I filled, I did some more honeycomb and started filling some in. Again, another one that I need to do in the mornings with good light. This is the only piece that I did not a single stitch in in Santa Claus land by with thy needle and thread this was on day 23 and I was prepping to go drive to Virginia and I just didn't have time that day but so he is still freaking like that. And this is on I Had Dyed Fiber by Vicki Clayton called Jackalope, maybe. Snowed in by Stacy Nash. I'm working on this piece and this one is on 36 count confederate gray using all the call for and I can't remember what I had done and what I completed but still building the house. Another Stacy Nash Mary Bear sampler. I started this last year in my um, Nash Mania. And I'm stitching this on the call for 36 count parchment. And I don't honestly remember big giant piece um, what I had done and what I worked on this time but that's the progress then next up is cross stitch nation by Heartstring Samplery Fast Twist. And I'm stitching this one on 32 count autumn fields. And I stitched this little man. On the 28th, Let Freedom Ring, Lila Studio, and I just put a few stitches in on the 28th, however, when I returned, I sat down and put many more stitches in and I uh, I see I put in all of this and this 
also completed that row. The little soldiers and the metal part. And this is being stitched on 36 count Wren by Picture This Plus. And next up, my hometown. By Carriage House samplings. And I ran into a little snafu on this one as well. I decided that I was going to um, use the DMC that's listed. So I finished up the tree. And I was going to On the tree, there are some plums, maybe. And the DMC that was called for oh, I'm going to see if I can remember it. It well. It uses silks. And the silk, the listing for the silk, the description is it's called grape dark. The DMC for that is 3844. And when I looked up the DMC, it's like turquoise, bright turquoise. And I'm like, uh, I've never seen a turquoise grape or plum. It's, it's, they're plums. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to order some of the silks and I'll leave the tree in the DMC. I don't, that's fine. I don't mind mixing silks and cotton, but I was frustrated because I wanted, I wanted to put the fruit on the tree and I couldn't. Next up is what? Not Forgotten Farm, Rabbit Stew. I took this one to Virginia with me. And this is stitched on a 32 count RR gray sky. I don't know if this is still available or not. I bought a lot of fabric off of eBay when I lived in Virginia and it was all R&R &R. and this is one of the pieces and I finished him. He's so cute. However, I'm not finding rabbits very cute at the moment or squirrels for that matter. They are ripping my garden apart and I have tried so many different things to keep them out and I can't there's no way for me to to put a fence around my raised beds just because of the spacing issue right now but if anyone knows a natural way I've tried coffee grounds I've tried shredding Irish spring soap and sprinkling that around that seems to have worked those two the combination of those two things work and then all of a sudden they stop working I don't know but I've been I've planted I've replanted and I've replanted and I'm getting tired of replanting because the squirrels and the rabbits are just going nuts so anyway that's a whole nother story my final piece was um, a Stacy Nash from 2019 Mania called Berry Basket.
and it is being stitched on 32 count raw linen and this is where I made it to. I finished up the bunting. I think that, did I have the basket done? I don't think I had the basket done. I think I did the basket and I started in on the strawberries. So not a lot really left on this one, but I do want to do this piece too, and maybe this. So that's it friends, all of my mania craziness. I feel very pleased with what I managed to accomplish this year. I think my plan going forward is to try to knock out some more of these and probably participate in the mania the same way next year as I did this year, just pulling mania pieces from previous years. And if I have an open space, using that open space to work on one of my projects more than one day. So that's my plan and I'm sticking to it. I will be working on my stitch 10 and 20. I counted my whips. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as I thought. I have 55 whips. Again, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but still I want to finish some of these pieces. So I'm trying not to have any new starts with the caveat of I will do coming to America start when that comes in. We'll see how long I last on this no, no new starts plan. But I have lots of things that I haven't shown um, that I've purchased, but don't have time for that today. I'm hoping that this will um, upload properly this time. I'll give you a little life update. My official last day of work was May 28th. We just got word from our superintendent that our district will offer a choice for parents of elementary and middle school um, to do online learning or in-class learning. For preschool, it is it all in class with a maximum of 12 students. I'm not sure how they think we're gonna get these little ones to sit six feet apart, <laughs> but it is what it is. So classes will resume in August uh, as normal as of now. If things change, that will change. Sadly, I am living in a state that has had an increase in cases because of all the fools who went to Lake of the Ozarks over Memorial Day. Um, So we'll see. I, I don't know. It's all to be determined. But as of right now, classes will start back in, in August as normal for preschool. I managed to travel safely to Virginia. Had a lovely time packing up my daughter, visiting with all the people at the foundation and 
I'm happy to have her back. I'm sad to see her time there uh, come to an end because it's a fantastic opportunity for a young artist. And we traveled back. I took two days to get there and two days to get back, even though I, I didn't really want to stop because of the whole COVID thing. But I am hopeful that both of the hotels that I stayed in were following COVID guidelines. And um, it was crazy. There was a lot more traffic than I thought there would be, um, given the fact that we're still really in the midst of a pandemic. But I'm home, she's back. I'm happy to have all my babies in one location again. And um, looking forward to getting to spend some time with her and my other two over the summer. So I have rambled on long enough. I think that's it. Um, I've just been busy gardening, taking care of puppies and kitties, <laughs> and life in general. So friends, I hope that you all are doing well and getting lots of stitching time in, enjoying the warmer weather. It has been hotter than Hades here on a few days, like 90s. Um, and then it will go into the, like a rainy spell and then back into the 90s and humid. Anyway, again, I'm rambling. Oh, can we talk about the hair? I'm over it. I'm, I'm over it, but I refuse to go to the salon because we had um, two salon workers test positive and they were they were working when it opened back up and so uh, clearly they didn't know they were spreading the virus but I just I only go out when it's absolutely necessary I go to the grocery store I go to my my daughter's house that's pretty much it I'm I would rather err on the side of caution. But I'm over the hair. I want to get it chopped. I'm, I'm scrolling it out to do Locks of Love or some one of those programs. I'm just looking forward to when life will be back to normal and I can get it cut. Anyway, I'm rambling. I hope you're all well. I hope you're enjoying your summer, whatever that means for you. And until next time, friends, be well.